several hundred if 
disorders, but I find especially around like personality disorders, um, you know, and I try to be kind of create awareness as much as I can. But um, yeah, like I said, it's improved drastically over the past year or so, um, and I'm so thankful for that. But yeah, I just I try my best to spread awareness about it um, because they're so um, misunderstood. There's such a like stigma around it. also get this, I get asked this one a lot, what's my, you know, personality type? So my Myers-Briggs personality type is ISTP. Yeah. <laughs> For a long time it was INFJ, but um, I took the test about a year ago, and yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> and I've taken it a couple times since then, and I always get that, so yeah. Um, okay, I know it's cliche, but I really dream of moving to New York City before I'm 30. I don't know if I necessarily want to like live there for the rest of my life, but I do want to live there at least for a couple of years just to experience it. Um, cause I have friends and family members who, you know, have lived there or live there currently and they love it. And it's definitely like hard to live there by, you know, it's not easy or affordable by any means, but all of them have said like, despite struggle and how, you know, hard it can be to live there. It's so worth it. So I do definitely want to at least try it out for a couple of years. Um, this one, I've never broken a bone before. Knock on wood. Um, but I've never broken a bone. Um, the worst I've done is I've like seriously sprained my, um, my wrist. Um, like I almost broke it. Um, they said it, like, it was so close, like, the closest thing to a fracture they've ever seen without it being an actual, like, fracture or a break, so, yeah, again, knock on wood, I really hope I don't break anything, but I haven't yet. Um, I've been listening to Taylor Swift, who is still, like, my favorite artist since I was three years old, so, <laughs> which is crazy to think about, um, but I love her. And I love her music. And speaking of Taylor Swift, um, I'm in the top 0.05% of her listeners on Spotify. I know she has like 60 million or something like that, but it's still a pretty good accomplishment in my eyes. Um, I love her music. Um, I've kept every card and letter I've gotten since I was six years old. I have, you know, a ton at this point, but... I try and keep every single one, um, that I get, even if it's, like, for example, like, I have this one that I got from, like, an Etsy seller, like, I keep everything, I, and it's so weird, because I'm not like that about, like, other things, like, I'm not, I don't tend to, like, hoard stuff or keep, like, unimportant things, I'm, like, I'm actually really good about getting rid of things I don't use anymore, like, donating them or just throwing stuff away, but there's something about cards and letters that I just, I always hold on to. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, my favorite crystal is Labradorite. I love Labradorite. I have a ton of Labradorite jewelry as well. Um, I have rings, necklaces, um, bracelets. Yeah, I love Labradorite. It's so pretty. I totally realized I should have gotten some and shown you all that. That's okay. <laughs> um, if you know what it is, then you know. And if you don't, you can search it up. It's so pretty. Labradorite. Okay. So, this kind of circles back to music, but I'm a huge fan of listening to video game soundtracks throughout the day. Um, again, when I'm at school, just to kind of listen to things or... Um, when I go to sleep, um, I really like, um, I've kind of switched from listening to podcasts or ASMR just to, like, video game soundtracks or calming music, um, but my favorite video game soundtracks are Minecraft, Night in the Woods, and Stardew Valley. Those are my three favorites. Um, they're so good, they're so relaxing, and almost, like, nostalgic, and, um, they would just put me in such a relaxed state. <laughs> um, and that might also 
also be part, like, be a part of, you know, whenever I do play them. Especially when I was younger with, like, Minecraft, I can remember, like, trying to keep my eyes open while playing, or with Stardew Valley and Night in the Woods, which has been, you know, more in recent years, but, you know, curled up in my bed playing. Maybe it's just a kind of association thing, but, um, I love video game soundtracks. Alrighty. When I was 13, I read the entire Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire book in a single day, and that was my, like, the only thing I talked about for a long time. I was that kid, excuse my stomach, um, but I was like, I read that whole book in a day, which is kind of cringy looking back on, but I was definitely very proud of it at the time, <laughs> and I don't even like Harry Potter that much anymore, like, I'm not opposed to it, but... I just kind of read it to read it, I think. Um, oh, and I know people are going to ask, so for my Harry Potter house, um, I'm actually a Slytherin, which is for Pix and Skin. I love green. That wasn't even intentional. Um, Alright, we're getting down to the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, eight more to go. Alright, so I taught myself to sew when in elementary school both hand sewing and to use a sewing machine and I've actually made several different pieces of clothing for myself um, and I'm very proud of that that's something I am um, I feel like not to sound like an old lady but I feel like sewing is kind of a lost art um, you know so many people don't do it anymore but I think it's so cool to see like you know what was some pieces of fabric like literally just like square pieces of fabric an outfit for yourself. Like, it's just so cool. And I love being able to say, especially, like, not to, like, be boastful or anything, but when people, like, compliment my outfits that I made, like, if I'm wearing a top that I made or, you know, like a skirt or something, and people are like, oh my gosh, where did you get it? And then I get to say, oh, I made it, like I sewed it myself. There's just, I always, like, get so happy about it. I don't know. Um, okay, this one is really funny, kind of embarrassing, um, but two-ish years ago, I was watching pretty much only British TV, like, uh, now I can't even think of it, just, like, a ton of, like, British shows on Netflix, um, like, Sex Education, Great British Baking Show, Doctor Who, um, literally, like, all those kind of, like, teen, oh, like, skins, um, I can't think of a whole lot of other stuff. Oh, the A-list, like, literally tons of different British TV. And I started to, like, talk in a British accent subconsciously, like I wasn't even doing it to be funny. But uh, I was, like, I was hearing British people's voices more than, like, other people's voices, because it was during quarantine. And so I literally started talking in a British accent subconsciously. It was so funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, that one's just so kind of embarrassing, but it's so funny. Alrighty, my guilty pleasure is really trashy reality TV shows like Love Island, Do Hot to Handle, um, Jersey Shore, like I love like really trashy reality TV shows, um, as like a guilty pleasure, like there's something about it. Um, like especially when I can't sleep at night, I'll just turn this on and I'm like, I, part of me, this is also kind of embarrassing to say, but, like, part of me loves the drama. Like, I 
is not musical artist like you know painting artist is uh, Frida Kahlo um, I went and actually saw an exhibit um, a while ago and um, or not even a while ago recently um, or somewhat recently I should say um, and oh my gosh I she was my favorite artist like prior to seeing that but getting to like see all of her art like and, and up close, like, it's just so beautiful, um, I'm just obsessed with her artwork, um, and just her whole life story, like, she's so, uh, she's literally, like, the coolest fucking person ever, like, she's so cool, anyways, <laughs> so ASMR Darling was the first ASMRtist I ever watched, um, like, she's the whole reason I got into ASMR, so, Thank you to ASMR Darling. I would not be here today without her. Um, I can very clearly remember her first video, or like the first video that I watched of her. So like the first ASMR video I ever watched. Sorry, I'm like mesmerized by this piece here. Um, sorry. <laughs> but the first ASMR video I ever watched was like this doctor roleplay of hers. And my brother showed me it. And I loved it so much. I was like, this is so weird. But Really weird. 